What's up, teachers? Welcome to another episode of Teacher Help. And today we're going to go over how to install Screencastify and kind of get rolling with it. First off, you need to know Screencastify is an extension for Chrome. In order to use it, you need to have Google Chrome. If you don't have Google Chrome, uh, there's a video on our Teacher Help site that shows you how to install Google Chrome. All right, so let's go ahead and get started and let's find Screencastify. So we can go up here. Since we have uh, Google Chrome installed, we can search up here. Screencastify. All right, awesome. And it's this first link here, or you could always go to screencastify.com. All righty, and as I told you, it's a Chrome extension, so of course it asks add it to Chrome. So let's hit add to Chrome. It's gonna take us to Chrome's web store. And right here on the right, you'll see add to Chrome again, and then you'll see this show up, hit add extension. And then it will do its thing. Yep, so now I have Screencastify and it's asking me to turn on sync. I'm not worried about that. All right, so now we have Screencastify installed. Awesome. How do we use it? You need to go up here to your extensions tab. So if you're using Google Chrome, you'll see this little puzzle piece. And I have Grammarly and right here, Screencastify. If you want it to show up here, you can hit this little pin. Now looky here, we've got this little icon here. Let's go ahead and click it. Awesome, so now we need to set up Screencastify. It wants us to sign into our Google account. We've already created one. You wanna make sure this is ticked to automatically save your videos to Google Drive, where it saves the videos to when you're finished. So let's hit sign in with Google. So now we're here, it wants us to sign in. Keep signing in, so hit sign in with Google. So let's go ahead and sign in with the Google account we've already created. My Alex Smith, teacher. Yep. And you can use your school email, whatever you've created to build to make that Google account. My password in. All right, now it wants to access our Google account, and this gives Screencastify permission to save the videos to our Google Drive. So let's hit allow. Let's go back. So we did step one. So we go back to that tab where you're setting up your Screencastify, and you can just kind of refresh it, hit enter. So now we need to set permissions. So Google Chrome and Screencastify need access to our webcam and microphone. So hit, make sure that's checked and then drawing and annotation tools. So if you wanna draw on your video, so let's go ahead and hit next, hit allow. And then it's gonna ask us one more time if, if Screencastify can use it and we're gonna say allow. Awesome. And now it wants us to Tell, tell a little bit about ourselves. I'm gonna say I'm an educator and I have college slash university experience. Woo and now we're ready. So, now we're ready to start recording. So let's go back up here to this tab on your basic account. So you can upgrade, but on the basic account, you only get five minute limit per video. So Screencastify limits you. If you're looking just to make quick under five minute videos, then Screencastify will work great. We can record just a tab, so we can just record each of these tabs, just we can choose the whole desktop, so that will record everything, or webcam only, so if I just want to put my face in it. But first up, we need to say microphone. We would need to select our microphone. Uh, you should have this many options. You should just have one or two. By default, mine's already selected, and you can tell it's selected because I'm getting levels here. And I can embed my webcam, and I just select it there. Booyah. And that's good. Uh, there's a countdown timer. You can set a timer. You can show drawing tools. Tab audio is if you're like showing a YouTube video, it's going to record the video of what's playing. So that might be something you want if you want to watch a video with your students or watch a video in the video. So something to keep in mind there. Uh, then we have desktop and it can get the system audio. So if you're playing a video on your desktop or playing some music for your students to hear, then system audio, you'll want to select that. The webcam, it's only you, so it's not going to ask the audio question. So let's just do desktop because that's probably what everyone's going to be using. I'm going to not have my system audio because on the off chance one of my tabs are playing something or my Spotify is going, I don't need that. I just need the students to hear my voice while I talk. So let's hit record. 
I'm not gonna use my webcam because I'm recording over here and turn off the webcam and hit record and now I've got two monitors so you probably won't see this unless you have two monitors as well I'm gonna just record the current one I'm seeing you can also record just certain windows so I can use my blender uh, what my current recording software or any of my Google tabs so I'm gonna just do this Google tab here and hit share Ooh, a timer and booyah we're recording now we're recording straight from Screencastify. I had to redo this part because my uh, video was actually blocking these tools. So let's talk about the tools. So first off, you've got Focus Mouse, which you know draws people's eyes to your mouse wherever you click. Also, you've got Hide Cursor and Not Move, so if that's enabled, you sit still, no movement. And then we also have highlight clicks. So wherever you click, it highlights. Pretty good, pretty, pretty good little set of tools there. Next up, let's turn off mouse. We got the pen tool, which is pretty nifty little tool here. You can circle stuff. Uh, you can do some math problems. Uh, you can even draw. So if you just want to put a little smiley face, you can change the color too. Then you can also erase which is great. You can do individual erase erasure things. You can erase things, you know, like that. Or you can go back over to the eraser tool and do a whole screen wipe. Another cool thing is if you're using the pen tool and then you're like, oh, let's go to a different tab. It will save that drawing to wherever, you know, it picks up that it was drawn at. So that's, you can have a whole sheet a whole tab just for drawing and to keep all your drawings um, kind of in one spot. So that's a, that's a cool idea. You can turn off your webcam, turn it back on. Simple as that. And then there's also the fact that you can make the webcam massive. So if you just want to take up a, a quarter of the screen, there we go. Uh, I think I saw in the video they were actually able to make themselves more portrait instead of landscape. But, um, you know, this uh, widescreen sort of resolution is fine for me. It's not too big a deal. You know, you can always just move your camera wherever you need. Just be aware that you are there. So, yeah. And then you can hide the tools. So if you don't need the tools at all, then maybe you need to see whatever's in this little corner. You turn them off. But that's it. Uh, if you hit this tab right here, that just kind of takes away your webcam. You can just turn it back on by clicking down here. So cool stuff. So that's cool stuff. Now that we're finished, uh, we're gonna hit stop sharing down here. You can also hide this bar if you hide it. If you hide it, where does it go? Probably back up here. It hides that so you'll have to stop it from the Screencastify extension up here. You can also pause your recording. So let's say you gotta go, you're cooking some food and your timer just went off. You're cooking some chicken nuggies, your timer just went off. You gotta do something. So I paused it, I'm back. You can also trash the recording if you just ain't digging it. Or you can, I think, restart it here. Restarting will permanently delete the current one and automatically start a new one. So if you're not happy with it, you can just keep rolling with it without having to run through all the mumbo jumbo that comes once you hit the pause, the stop button. So yeah, so let's go ahead and hit the stop button and it's gonna open up a Screencastify tab with our video. So let's, let's check that out. So every time you finish recording, it's gonna take you straight to this uh, tab, kinda of lets you rename your video. So I'm gonna call this one Alex Webcam Features because I'm showing off the features of a webcam with Screencastify. I'm gonna download it. Let's see, MP4 please. So that's great. So that's something you can do. You can make an animated GIF if it's something that you wanna just like send a quick picture to your kids on how to do a quick something. So that's. That's really neat. Animated GIFs don't have audio, so make sure whatever you're doing, you know, the visual speaks for itself. You can export audio only, so if you just want to upload a sound clip for your students, that's even pretty cooler. I don't know if Loom gave me that option to do an audio only sort of thing. And then you can download them just as easy, so if you need to like download all your videos and share them to your uh, students, also, since it's Screencastify and it's got Google capabilities built into it, you can share it to the classroom with the click of a button. 
or publish to YouTube, which is what I'm interested in at the moment. So let's let's go ahead and hit publish to YouTube. It's going to say add a channel. And so I'm just going to use my teacher help account. Allow it. Yes. Booyah. And now I can upload as private to public or unlisted. I do unlisted because I only want to share it with my students. And then I'll call it I I call it Alex Webcam Features already. And I'll be like, and I'll I'll and I'll say Screencastify's webcam features. Awesome. And now I hit upload. And now it does the uploading for me. So once it's finished, I can just go to my YouTube page and share it wherever I need be. Heck, once it finishes uploaded, I can view it on YouTube from Screencastify, or I can just copy the link. In this case, I just need the link, and now I can go post it wherever I want. I can share it to my students through email or whatever, however I communicate with my students. But let's just make sure it's right. So give YouTube about five minutes to you know process your video, depending on how long it is. A longer video takes longer to process. Once it's done, our video will be up and ready to be viewed. There we go. That's it for Screencastify. Your videos are always gonna be saved on your Google Drive, so let's head over there, drive.google.com. You can even search up Google Drive and go to the probably the first or second tab there and do that. I'm not on my teacher help account, so over here in the right, you can just change that to your, your account that you wanna get to. And looky here, we only have two things here and it's both of our videos. It's kind of great, Screencastify doesn't just lay your videos out loosely across your drive. It actually puts them in a folder, which is kind of nice. And where I rename this one, we have it here. We can download it, share right. it. We can download it or share it anywhere. Manage our caption tracks, we can do all that stuff. So. Screencastify, it's good, but you only get five minutes to do what you need to do unless you buy Pro. So let's go and see how much Pro is real fast. So if we were to go to the Screencastify tab and hit upgrade. Oh, you get education discounts, don't, don't forget, that's important. It's nice, it may be just something you need to talk to with your district if you decide to go this route. Once again, Loom is free for educators forever as long as you run through the, the teacher verification process, which we did in the video. So feel free to check out that tutorial and see about Loom. I like Loom. Loom gives you a lot of power. You can always just download your video straight from Loom and upload it to YouTube. So that's an option um, if you're, you know, but if you need a super easy route and you want to upload straight to YouTube from your screen recording software, Screencastify isn't that bad. And you could even keep using the free version of five minute recordings is all you need. So that's pretty much it for Screencastify. I love, I really like Screencastify because it's got the YouTube features and Google Classroom features built right in. But Loom is free for teachers and it's not a super hard process to verify yourself. It's just a little bit of information and I knew the, by the next morning that I was verified and ready to go. You get an email saying you, your account's now pro. So Screencastify and Loom, both really great. Both have really great like ease of use, use things going for them. But you may just have to make that decision on the five minute recording or this other video platform where students can comment and you see their times. Just watch both videos and you know make that decision for yourself. You may just have to do it on a case by case basis because Screencastify is really easy, but Loom is Loom is easy too. It's it's a tough it's a tough one. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at alex at the .org and I'll help you out any way I can. And that's it for now. I'll holler at you later.